Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week I want to do something that some of you have been asking for, and that's to have a better and improved game over. And this week we're going to do the first part of that, which is this cool heart exploding into shards animation. So to start off with, head to your heart sprite, and let's go to the costumes tab, and let's create a shard costume. So look for your broken costumes. I'm just going to copy broken six, and I'm going to use this tool to delete one of the halves. And then I'm going to use this tool to delete a bunch of the points in this particular half. Okay, so if I delete like these, and we'll delete some more of these points. And we'll delete some of these as well. And once you've got something that looks a bit like this, I'm just going to change this point into a pointed version rather than a curved version. And this point, I'm gonna do the same, a pointed version. Now this is a bit too thin, so I'm gonna drag this out a little bit. And then have a look on your screen, and you'll notice this might be a bit too small. Yep, that's a bit too small. So I'm just going to use this tool to make this shard a bit bigger. Finally, once you're done, drag it into the middle to make sure it's centered. And we're going to rename this costume as Shard. And once that's done, let's head to the code. So once you're in your heart sprites code, look around until you find this death and invulnerability when green flag clicked code. Now there's two parts of this code. First is the death and next is the invulnerability. Let's take out this invulnerability code. Grab if heart invulnerable and just move it off somewhere by itself. We'll put that back in at the end, but in the meantime, it makes our code a little bit easier to read just to see what we're looking at. Now currently we've got this stop all, which is a very boring way to end our game. So let's take this stop all and throw it out. So let's double check our GIF and see what we want to have happen. So first of all, we see the heart break animation happen, which is something we already have in our game. And then all of these shards come spinning out of where the heart was and the heart itself disappears. Now, how many shards are there? We've got six, six shards, that looks right. So right here in our code where our stop all was, let's put in a repeat six create clone of myself. Then after that repeat six, let's put in a hide. And now all we need to do is give these new clones that we're making of our heart some instructions. So go to control, get out when I start as clone. Let's switch the costume to shard. And then we need them to move in all those different directions. So it looks like most of them go up and they also have some gravity to them. They start to fall back down again. Now, rather than trying to reuse any of the movement code that we've got for the heart or the velocity or anything like that, let's just create some new variables that we can use to manage the movement of these shards without having to worry about any weird collisions or anything strange like that. So we're gonna make two variables, shard x, which controls the x movement of our shards, and shard y, which controls the y movement of our shards. So go to variables, click make a variable, call this shard x, click for this sprite only, press okay, and then do the same for shard y. Make sure you click for this sprite only and press okay. Now let's set our shard X and our shard Y when these clones are created. Now, because we want these all to go in entirely random directions, we are going to get out some pick randoms. Now for the X speed, I'm going to make the lowest number minus five and the highest number five. If you want them to spread out further from the center, you just need to make these numbers further apart. Maybe try minus 10 to 10. And now we need to decide how much Y speed we want to add to them. Now most of the shards seem to go up, which give that cool explosion look to them, but there is this one here that seems to be traveling down, but I'm going to skew the pick random numbers so that most of them will be traveling up. So I'm gonna start off with a pick random, and I'm gonna make the lowest number minus one, and the highest number to be seven. Now we are gonna create some gravity code which will slow down that Y movement up and then bring it back down again. So if you want, you could make this quite high if you wanted the shards to go up quite high on the screen. Now let's get out a repeat until. And first of all, let's put in our gravity effect. 
go to variables and get out change shard y by. Now this needs to be a minus number to make that y movement slowly start to point downwards again. But I want the gravity to be quite weak, so I'm only going to set it to minus 0.3. Now, if you want the gravity to be stronger and for the shards to go up and then cut, fall down a lot faster, you just need to make this a bigger number. Maybe try minus one or minus 0 0.7. Now we need to actually make the movement code happen. So we're going to go to motion and get out a change X and a change Y. And while we're here, let's get out a turn 15 degrees to get that cool spinning effect. And we're going to change X by our shard X variable and we're going to change y by our shard y variable. Now, how long do we want to repeat this movement for? Well, we've got two options. One, we could just put in a simple touching edge and then put at the bottom, delete this clone. Now, this means these shards will run their movement code until they touch the edge of the screen, the top, the sides, or the bottom, and then they'll delete themselves. I'm actually going to replace this touching edge though because I want my shards to always make sure they fall to the bottom of the screen. So even if my shards shoot up and touch the top edge, they will still fall back down to the bottom of the screen. So I'm gonna replace this touching edge with a Y position less than. And this less than, I'm gonna make it minus 175. Now, if your shards are a little bit bigger than mine and they don't delete themselves at the bottom, maybe try something like minus 170 instead, something a bit higher on the screen. So now let's give it a test. And so that we don't have to die naturally, which will take a while and be very boring, let's put in a cheat code that immediately kills us. Bit of an unusual cheat code, but it will make testing this much faster and much more convenient. Go to events, get out when space key pressed, then go to variables and get out set player current HP to zero. Obviously, if you use space key for something else in your game, then just change this to some other letter like T or U or V, whatever you like. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see what this looks like. Now that animation looked pretty good. However, if you take this hide out of your code, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, this is just continually making more and more shards. We didn't know it before because it was actually hiding those shards, but that's something we need to fix. So why is this happening? Well, everything inside this if only happens when our player current HP is less than one. So once our HP gets to zero, that's when it starts happening. However, because this is inside a forever loop, it happens over and over and over again and never stops. So we need to figure out some way of making this animation stop after the first time it happens. Let's do that by changing our mode variable. So go to variables and get out a set mode to game over. Then put that game over right under our repeat six and let's get our hide as well. You we can put that just above our set mode to game over. Then make sure that this code doesn't run if the mode is already set to game over. So let's get out an if then, we need a not equal to, and we're going to check that the mode variable is not equal to game over. Now take this if, and wrap it around our other if inside the forever. And now this code will run all the way to the bottom. It will set the mode to game over and then it will not run it anymore because it only gets run if the mode is not yet set to game over. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that all of our shards happen at slightly different times, whereas all of the shards here all leave at exactly the same time. So we can actually make that happen with our code. All we need to do is make sure that we wait until the mode is set to game over before we run any of the movement code inside our shard clones. So get out a wait until and then we can just copy this mode equals game over. 
We can even make a cool dramatic pause that happens right before the heart explodes into shards. If we put right above this hide, a wait one seconds. However, now that we've got this long pause, we've got to make sure that our shards don't show themselves until it's time for them all to start spinning in different directions. So get out a hide and put it underneath when I start as clone and get out a show and put it underneath our wait until mode equals game over. Now let's give that a little test, shall we? Okay. And that looks great. However, it's a bit difficult to see with all this other stuff in the way. We need to make sure the screen goes completely black so that all we can see is the heart exploding. So to make sure that everything all hides itself and the screen goes completely black all at once, let's set up a broadcast, shall we? Go to events, get out broadcast, and put it right underneath if player current HP less than one. Then click on the broadcast and we wanna select new message. We're going to call this message game over. Press okay. Now let's create a bit of code that will respond when we receive that broadcast of game over and then figure out which sprites will need it. So get out when I receive and change this to game over. First, let's make sure that we hide ourselves. Then let's get out a stop, go to control and look for stop all, drag that out but click on all and change it to other scripts in Sprite. Finally, get out a delete this clone. This is gonna be super useful for things like the attacks or the gasters where there might be a bunch of them and we can delete all of their clones all at once. So this code, we don't actually want to keep in the heart Sprite. We actually want to put it into other various places. So we're going to copy this code into our other Sprites now. Um, first of all, the enemy. Do we want the enemy to hide? Yes, I think we do. So drag this code and drop it on the enemy sprite and it should appear, there it is, very good. Next, do we want the box to disappear? Yes, I think we do. So let's drag that code into the box sprite. Same goes for the attack sprite. Let's do it for health bar as well. And the menu, we want those to disappear. Now the sub menu shouldn't be showing when we die because we should be dying in the evade mode. Same goes for damage as well. However, the yellow bullet, there could be those around when we die in evade mode. So let's drag it into yellow bullet. And we need it in the gaster blaster sprite. Now we need to look at this bottom row. So I'm just gonna move my portrait down a bit. There we go, so we can see a bit better. All right, Gaster Beam, yep, we want that in there. We don't need it in text, because that shouldn't be up while we're in the evade mode. We don't need it in fight, but we do need it in warning. Now the green shield, let's have a look. The green shield code, should already make it so that it hides itself when the mode is not evade and the soul is not green. So once we change the mode to game over, this should already be hidden. So we don't need to put it in here. Now, this bit is very important. This original, when I receive game over, that should be in the heart sprite. We don't want it here in the heart sprite. So get this and throw it out. Okay, now with that all done, I think it's time to give it another test. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. And we'll activate the kill code. And that looks perfect, excellent. Now, this needs to go. We're gonna to need to hide this variable. And there's also one more thing we're going to need to do. Just hit the green flag on your project again. And you might notice a few things are now missing. If we hid the box and we hid the enemy and the HP bar, we also need to make sure that we show them at the beginning of the game. So first of all, let's go to the enemy sprite, look around until you find when green flag clicked, and right underneath that, get out a show. Let's do the same thing for the box sprite. There we are, when green flag clicked, we need to show. And the health bar, we need to make sure we can see our health bar. There we go, we're gonna put a show right underneath when green flag clicked. 
Now everything else should be fine, but if there's anything else that you notice, you'll know what to do. You just need to put a show underneath when green flag clicked, if it's meant to be shown at the beginning of the game. Now we need to make sure that this variable will hide itself once we enter the game over mode. So go to the heart sprite and right underneath broadcast game over, we can go to variables and get out hide variable and we need to choose display player HP. That's the name of the variable we want to hide. Now remember, if we hide that variable, we need to make sure that we show it at the beginning of the game. So get out a show variable, display player HP, and put that right underneath the green flag right here. Now there's one more thing we need to do. Do you remember our invulnerability code that we took out? Well, let's put that back in. We should be done with our coding now. And that needs to go very specifically here. It's important you've got one orange line right here because that means if heart invulnerable is inside, if not mode equals game over, which means that this code here, the invulnerability code won't run when we're already dead and it's already game over. So now that we've got our shows and hides working correctly and our invulnerability code is back in, let's give it one last test, shall we? Okay, let's see what this looks like. Perfect, that's awesome. And if we hit the green flag, does everything come back? It does, excellent. Now, don't forget to get rid of your cheat code just to make sure you don't accidentally kill yourself every time you press the space bar. And that's all we have for this week. Next week, we're going to be doing a cool game over screen that will play after our heart has exploded into shards. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell to get notifications when the next episode is ready for you. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you need any help with your project. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.